Since the beginning of time, fishermen have been using live worms to catch multiple different species. Which is interesting because worms don't live underwater. Well, that's actually not true. Supposedly they can live up to two weeks underwater, but still, maybe that's the trick. A fish seeing a worm underwater is pretty rare, which may lead to them being more interested in biting it. So today we're running an experiment. We're going to go fishing with live worms for whatever bites. We would like to see how many species we can catch in five hours. But first, we need to get some supplies. We're going to head to a local gas station in South Georgia that we've been to in the past to pick up our tackle. So let's go ahead and get inside and see what we get. First thing we need is some bobbers. We can use this for more of a traditional worm on a bobber rig. Second, we need some hooks. I decided to go with some small panfish hooks and also some bigger hooks for whatever bigger fish would like to bite. I also grabbed some basic split shots for our weights. But lastly, we obviously need our worms. We decided to go with some smaller worms and also some big night crawlers. But now that we got all of our supplies, it is time to hit the river. All right, boys, we have our supplies that we got from the gas station. We're gonna go over here to the back of the truck and go ahead and have everything laid out that we need. So everything that we got from the store, we got these big old worms. Look at this. We wanted to get a variety, some massive night crawlers right there. And then we also have these worms. Those are actually a little smaller. I think we got a good variety here. And then we have some split shots. I got like three bobbers and then also the hooks. I pretty much got a smaller shank for like bluegill and whatever smaller fish and then i also got a bigger one for really whatever else bites that we can use that for so that's pretty much everything that we got i got a kick in combo and a mock crush or actually a mock smash right here so old mock smash is the red rod and kicking combo is the green one if you guys want to check out any of the kicking their bass tv x lose combos you can check them out, kickingtheirbass.com. Before we rig up, I kind of want to show you guys where we came out to. Before we get deeper into this video, only 27% of y'all watching these videos are actually subscribed. So if you could, take the time, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. I'd appreciate it. So this is a boat ramp that we've fished in the past. We've tried to catfish out here. We've tried bass fishing out here. Me and my boy Bradley way back actually took a John boat out here. We went bass fishing. This is actually off the Ogeechee River. So I kind of wanted to start here, more of a natural spot. It's not like a pond, this is a natural river. And uh, I just wanted to see what we can catch here because our goal is to catch as many species as we can. And I think this is a great start. But as we pulled up here, we kind of had a problem. This place is ridiculously flooded. As you guys can tell, there is water everywhere. The whole boat ramp isn't even visible anymore with how much water has been flooded up to the surface. So there was also a bank down here in the corner that i actually envisioned walking to but it's inexistent guys the water is up about 40 foot 50 foot on the bank we actually have all this grass right when you have a big storm or the water's flooded i notice a lot of these bass or a lot of these fish in general push up shallow you know all that water's getting up in that soil all those creatures everything's coming out of it and a lot of the fish are going to be, be pushed up pretty shallow right now so i wanted to try it so we're going to go back and rig up we have this island right here, all this grass. I think it's a good spot for us to start off on this video. We're still gonna hop around to some ponds, some swampy areas, maybe some more rivers, and just see how we can expand the whole species gap of this video and see how many different fish we can catch. Our goal is probably five, but you know, we might could catch more than that. Got the boy Connor with me today. What's going on, What's up, Pam? Guys? You ready? I'm ready. Ready with this live worm action. This is a fun little fishing experiment, guys. We've done these videos where we fish with a bait for whatever bites in the past and you guys loved them. So this is just a new little style to it. If you guys like these videos, let us know down below. We gonna go ahead and get rigged up here. So I actually already have some split shots rigged up on this. I'm gonna take one of these off and just leave one on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up rigging up just one of these small panfish hooks and putting a little bobber on. And then Connor's gonna do something a little bit different. All right, so while Noah is setting up that other rig, I'm gonna do something a little different with this mock smash. So I have a bigger hook on here. We're going to pinch on two bullet weights about here and here. And we're just gonna throw this thing out there in the middle. And we're actually gonna rock a little bit bigger of a worm with this one. A little pinch there. I think two of those is probably all that we're gonna need. Go ahead and grab us one of these big old stinky boys right here. We're actually just gonna rig this entire thing up on the hook. Pile of stinky boys there and we're good to go. 
Let's go ahead and get down to the water. So boys, this is the pretty simple rig that I'm gonna start off with. Just your basic bobber up top, split shot in the middle, followed all the way down by this small shank hook for panfish. This is what I'm gonna start off with just to try to get where there's some red breast, regular bluegill, some sunfish, pretty much anything. I think Connor's gonna start off with these big worms. I'm actually gonna start off with some of the smaller ones. So let's go ahead and get that rigged up real quick. Oh, these worms are hyper too, boy. Look at that. I think to start off, I'm actually gonna go with the whole worm on here. I usually don't do that, but let's just rig up this whole guy. That looks spicy, boys. So that's what we're starting off with. Let's go ahead and get out to the bank and see if we can get a bite. All right, boys, we're gonna see if my whole thought process on this little island right here and also on the edge of this grass is gonna hold some fish. I think I'm gonna start off throwing right up on this island. Cool part about this is this river has current. So you got a lot of current moving out there and this is pretty much just a little current break. So this is a great little spot for some fish to set up, in my opinion, right on this little island. And I can't recall if this usually sits out of the water or not. Either way, I think there's gonna be some fish up here. I just gotta get a good cast. There we go. Right there in the shade. A little current break because of that island. Should be some fish up there. We're gonna go ahead and start off right here. Toss this thing out there. This rig does not have a bobber on it. So we are just gonna be letting that bait sit right there on the bottom. Oh, there we go, boys. We just got bit. Here we go. We're getting bit. There we oh, no. No shot. Okay, well, that's our first bite. I'm actually going to slide this bobber down ever so slightly. I think it's pretty shallow in that corner, but that's exactly what we needed. We needed something to get us excited there. Just a little bite. Come on, fish, bite me again. That got me excited, guys. I just want to see what our first fish. Here we go. He's buying it again. Look at that. Keep eating at it. Yes, sir, buddy. Come on. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to tighten this worm up just ever so slightly. I think he's just grabbing the end of it and messing with it. I want him to be able to get that in one bite. The split shot just keeps on sliding down my line too. Might need to go crank that down when I go back to the car. Let's we'll see if we can catch him again. He's biting right there. He's honestly a little shallower guys. Like exactly what I was talking about earlier, which I was hoping some of these fish would be pushed up by a lot of this vegetation or just grass in general. Yeah, he's messing with it again. There, there he goes. Look at him running off with it. He might be really small. All right, boys, that fish ended up taking my worm and I have a strategy here. We don't need to go as big as we did with whatever's biting me over there. So we're probably gonna half one of these worms. We're just gonna get a little piece like that. Nothing big. Oh, dropped him. See that, just a little chunk. We're gonna triple dip it there, about three times up the hook. I think that's money. So a lot smaller, way more finesse. This fish shouldn't have a problem grabbing this. I'm just curious to see what it is, guys. This Ogeechee River has a ton of different fish in it. That's why I wanted to start off this video here. It's just a wide variety of really anything out here in this river. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can give him a bite. Yep, he's biting already. My line keeps getting hung up in these trees. There he is right there. Oh my gosh. That was actually our best bite yet. So we didn't really have any more bites. You know, I had that small fish that just kept pecking my bobber and we just decided to leave. You know, the Ogeechee River, when it gets floated like that, it can just be really tough. So we actually just came out to a pond now. So we fished a river at the start. Now we're out at a pond. Connor caught a lot of big ones here, so I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, I think there's some big bass that we can catch on these worms and also possibly some really big bluegill or catfish or mudfish. Boys, we're actually going with a full worm on this one. These worms are still super active. We had a little drive to get out to this place, but we're finally out here now. Let's see what we can catch that first spot i had high hopes for once i saw it flooded i was like uh might not be as good as what we thought we're gonna rig up a few of these things on the hook those big ones are just kind of uh kind of dead so we got this little lay down right here in my opinion that would be a prime spot for some of these fish to be on i really need to find the hot zone i'm trying to pop off like a bluegill or really anything that'll eat this little worm 
pretty quick here, and then we can move on to whatever else we want to catch. Connor's going for a bass over there. Guys, I think we might have something playing with us here. Just saw the line jump. Oh, he came off. Catching a fish on this worm, I don't think is going to be the hard part. It's more of just finding where the fish are located. If I can find where the fish are at, bite should not be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and throw a second one on there. Seems like they like it when there's there's two of them crawly boys hanging from that thing. <laughs> We're going to throw this right back out there. We just had a bite like right off of that, that bank there. So let's throw this out. Let it sit for a second. He should pick it up again. So boys, I haven't had any luck fishing for these bluegill. I had those bites at the first spot we hit today, but we're going to hit some other spots later in the day. So I'm actually going to cut this off and I'm going to go for whatever big can bite. Kind of what Connor's doing right now, except I'm going to do it a little different. You have yours on the bottom, right? Yep. I'm going to keep mine on a bobber. So we're going to put one of these bigger hooks on and put one of these big old night crawlers on and we should be good give that a shot out here just a bait and put my bobber a little higher maybe I don't know, we'll test this out so guys growing up me and my granddad i mean that's pretty much how i started fishing we would pretty much get a bobber like that put a hook same way and put some night crawlers on there and we would just sit there and wait and we catch a ton of really big bass so i guess we're gonna see if that same concept works today it's just a kind of a waiting game oh here we go here we go Dude. I saw that. That was a crazy thump. What the heck? He definitely took What's going on? <laughs> Dude. Hey, at least you're getting bites though. That's a good sign. And we know it's not a bluegill. At least we don't think. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think it is. I would definitely assume that it's a bass. Could be wrong though. What is doing that? I think I should just flip it over there. It keeps popping right here. I don't know what it is. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Just hammered it. I don't even think he has it though. What? Bro, what do you got? What? Dude, what you got? are you kidding A me? Bluegill. What? Okay. Yeah. With the way that fish was hitting it though. That all right, all right. For, for one though, I, I literally put this big hook on there because I wanted to catch a, a big bass yeah. on it. But hey, you know what? That's our first species right there. Got my personal servant here taking the. <laughs> fish off the hook for me guys exactly what type of i mean there's so many different types of sunfish and bluegill i'm pretty sure that's just a standard bluegill but uh if i am incorrect i'm not too acknowledgeable on uh bluegills let me know down below exactly what type of sunfish this is pretty sure it's just a standard bluegill though but there you go connor that's not what i thought you were gonna catch but at least we're on board now you know good job first fish that's one species out of the way it's just so crazy, man, because I'm throwing this worm on a bobber. You would think that they would hit it and you're having to be on the bottom out there. It's hard too, cause like one strategy can be excellent one day and then you go out and try it again and, and they just won't hit it. I mean, that's the whole purpose of our video though, is just trying different things and figuring out all the different fish that we can catch today, guys. You know, this is not something that we do. I'm actually gonna take my bobber off, Connor. I'll kind of do what you did. But yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't ever really do this and thought it would be something cool for us to come and experience and have you guys watch this so oops all right see see the line just popping like crazy now i'm gonna let him eat for just a second that fish should have the bait now so we're just gonna pick it up slowly he doesn't have the bait it's crazy how much the line is jumping though that's my only indicator whereas when you have a bobber on you kind of watch it you see it kind of pop down or disappear you know you got a fish but when you're free lining it you know, that bait's just sitting on the bottom. So you either gotta watch the line or another thing you can do is, you know, kind of pull it up right here and just let it sit in your finger and you can, can actually feel it when they bite. Ooh, that was a bite. That was 100% a bite. Oh yeah, golly boy, he's got it. I got him. Look at that dude, big freaking bluegill, man. See the side of that one looks different though, doesn't it? compared to the last one you panfish specialist let me know he ate that hook a little bit i'm gonna try to get that out but y'all panfish specialists let us know i don't know connor i think that's pretty much the same just regular bluegill there we go boys my first beautiful bluegill of the day it's a nice one he bit that thing good too thank you baby 
it's crazy they're getting that big hook dude i know that's what i'm thinking i can't even catch them on a tiny hook and if you guys know the explanation of that i mean let me know i'm just hoping we could stumble we know there's a lot of big bass here guys i mean me and connor have both caught a lot of fish right in this area so we know they're down there it's just pretty much the luck of the draw here we go look at that line look at that line don't hook that too hard i got him there you go what do we got? We got another little, little sunfish. Hey, let me see that. Hold on. That's a different one. 100%. I want to say that's our second species, though. It's technically still just a regular bluegill, but I'm pretty sure that that's a that's a sunfish, Connor. I think this is like a tiger trout. <laughs> it's one of those tiger trout ones. <laughs> yep. Tiger trout. We got a species number two going back in the pond. See you, buddy. So what you caught at first was definitely just a standard bluegill, right? Oh yeah. That was the second one you caught. Wait, I'm getting hit again. So it's still considered a bluegill, Connor, but it is a different type of bluegill. Yeah. We need to catch some bass, catfish, gar, mudfish, something, something different. You know what I mean? I think we'll be able to get a catfish pretty easily, but I also think like a bass won't be the too hard for us. Yeah. Dude, these things are just hammering it, bro. I've never caught bluegill how we are now, which is just so interesting. I don't know if you talked to him about this, but they actually eat grass, and that fish kind of dove to the ground there, and he's trying to get a snack. <laughs> they do not eat there. grass. <laughs> We're actually about to pack up from this place. We did get a start to the video, so we got just a regular panfish and a standard bluegill. So now we're going to try to target either some big bass, some catfish, or maybe even a big gar. All right, boys, we're out at a whole new spot. This is a pretty scenic one. I think you guys are gonna like, and we're gonna see if we can catch a mudfish, a gar, something that would be hiding out in the swamp. I've caught a lot of muds and gar here in the past. I just don't see how a gar would eat this worm unless I just put it in front of his nose and he just happened to hit it. Look at, like, look at these boils here. There's a lot of activity, a lot of fish in here. First, I just wanna see if I can spot something. I mean, there's so many boils and movement around. This place has a lot of activity, which is a great sign. I mean, look at that, boys. Maybe let's go over here. There we go. Look at that. You would think I'm fishing in the water right here, but it turns out that most of the fish are actually on the bridge. So that's why I cast it over there. All right, let's try that one more time. There we go. Turns out the fish actually tend to stay in the water. and They don't go on the bridges as often. Times change, man. You see anything swimming? Not yet. Dude, you should have saw when I walked right there. It was like stuff moving everywhere. We have definitely hit the most today, guys. Just trying a bunch of different stuff between ponds and rivers. Now we're in like a swamp. Oh, oh, oh I scared them, dude. They were too gar. Really? They saw me from that far away. You could probably see where the angle you're at. We might try to do a comment doing. Look at that, boys. That is not what we want. That's a dead snake. Dried up carcass. <laughs> One thing I don't mess with is them snakies. I do not like. For us to catch a gar, guys, we're going to have to get ultra lucky. I'm talking like throw it in front of his nose and like hook set. Like he might just try to go after it. Very slim chance. That's not how gar eat. But I don't think it's impossible. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What is that? Is that a mud? No way. Get him, boy. <clears throat> oh, dude, he's pulling drag. Oh, my gosh. That's a giant mud, Big dog. Mud. Oh my Which God. side do you want to take him on? You want to take him on down there? Over there right? Yeah, over yeah. on that side. Big old mud fish right there. Don't lose him. Yeah, I'd walk him down. Dude, that's a big mud fish right there. Holy cow. I guess my gut paid off, dude. It did. Holy fish. cow, that's a unit <laughs> of a mud. A yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> wow, look at that big boy. Dude, that's a nice big boy. bowfin right there. That is our second to third species of the video, and I'm just honestly surprised. I, I thought that this swamp place could could hold some of these big muds or gar and uh if anything was gonna bite the worm it would definitely be a mudfish and heck you got slammed bro well good job that's that's awesome third species off the list 
Boom. Noah's trying to get me to hold this thing. It's got a spider on Where? it. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're funny. No, not You're a chance. funny, dude. This thing's actually got a spider on it, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> that is I'm so do a, funny. Do a little bit of that right that there. That is so yeah. funny. <laughs> Dude, good job though. That was sick. Hook sending that fish all the way in that all corner. All the way on the other side. Walking too. all the way down on top of the bridge to get down here to land the fish. That was sick. I guess it was worth coming to the swamp, guys. I had mixed feelings on it, but I was like, this, we've had a tough time today. This would be sick. And we pulled it off. Heck yeah, dude, on to the next spot. Boom. All right, boys, we're out at yet again, another pond. This is actually a place that I haven't fished in about four years. So we're gonna give it a shot and just see what we can catch. See if we can add any more fish on the species list. You know, we caught two different pan fish and then we also caught, or Connor caught that mud fish, which was just clutch. But now it's time for us to at least catch a bass, bro. We, if we, if we're kicking their bass and we don't catch a bass, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Kicking their brim, kicking their mudfish. Kicking everything but the bass. Watch him bite like so quick in here, dude. Imagine. Connor, look. Are you getting him? Oh, oh what was well, that? I have no idea what it was. It's probably a bluegill that small. <gasps> what? Oh my God. That was a bass? Dude! What happened? Dude, I was reeling at full speed to re- I was literally gonna recast it and I'm burning it back in and that fish ate it right there. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're telling me he chased your worm? Yeah. Dude, no, no, I'm talking like full speed. And he just totally exploded on it. That is insane. Are you kidding? <laughs> what? what is going on? That's pretty crazy, bro. That was a bass. Well, guys, that is pretty ridiculous. Hey, maybe we figured out a new strategy. Dude, look at that. Connor. Oh, boys. That's a bass right there, dude. Yeah, I got a bass. I got a freaking bass, boys. Let's go right when Connor lost his. Oh. <laughs> he came off, bro. We are going back for him. Connor was burning and missed a bass. I just hooked the bass in that corner. I mean, it was instant too. It was like the moment I landed in the water. There's actually a boil over there again. There might, there must just be a lot of fish in this corner. Right there. Get ready, boys. Get ready. Come on, eat it. There we go. Oh, my gosh. Pulled it a little bit, a little too quick. It might not have been a bass. I don't know. There, there was a big boil. I can only assume there's another big bass over there. There we go. Oh, it came off. Yeah, they're loaded in this corner, though. Jeez. Look at that little tiny bass right here. Let me see if I can catch this one. This fish is literally right in front of me. Oh, my gosh. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? He's going for it. Oh, he just took it. He took my worm. All right. Little did I think that one of the last species we would catch would be a bass. I did not think that's how today would go. But hey, that's how it's going. So we just need to lock in here. Catch us a dang bass, boys. All right, dude. We need a bass very badly very very badly give me big stinky mama right now <laughs> i thought stinky mama would be up in this pipe you know oh dude oh oh dude i swear this minnow about an inch and a half connor flopped on the bank and something just came up and ate it dude that was pretty crazy i've never seen a minnow flop up on the bank and then like a miniature bass or something came up and ate him we just want one more species Tonight. Dun, 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 dun. You gotta sing to him, dude. You gotta play the fishing guitar and everything. I think they just think my worm's pitiful. I, they gnawed it down to a freaking centimeter. There we go. Oh no! Okay, you're you're a step closer than me. The small hook's definitely the move. 
I got something. Dude, there is no way that is even possible that I just caught that. Is it a different species? Yeah, dude, it's so small, it should be considered a different species. <laughs> All right, well, that's gotta be at least the biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. Look at that thing. Phew! Okay, well, same species, we're throwing him back. Hopefully we can get some more. Dude, he was on the whole... <laughs> no wonder we're having a hard time catching these things. Well, you just caught one too? What the <laughs> heck? I actually thought it was a bass, Connor. That was that small. I was about to start freaking out, bro. I was two seconds away of screaming like I had a 10 pounder. See what I was doing? I was jigging it like this, dude. I'm telling you, it's jigging it, dude. And there's our yeah. other species. <laughs> dude, you just gotta hit the jig for him, dude. You pulled the heavy work on that mudfish and, and that was a clutch catch there too. Absolute unit, straight out of the factory, straight off the assembly line. Look at this thing. <laughs> Did take us a while, but we finally got to our other species. All right, dude. Back to the depths. 